Yeah, okay, it's hard. So it's really hard to do that. <laughs> so update us. Where are we at today? Yeah. Uh, so we we had a multi-year research agenda to figure out how to build a foundation for consensus that eventually could scale to billions of users. And that's what Vitalik has been doing with F2 and, uh, and Casper and that whole agenda. And they had more money in a year of extra time on us and we beat them to market. So I, I, it's like when AMD beats Intel or something like that. It's always nice that the underdog has uh, the ability to do that. So we launched Shelly in July and uh, it's been getting more and more decentralized over time. We're about, I think 60% of the blocks are made by the uh, stake pool operators, 40% by the hybrid nodes. And by March, the network will be completely decentralized. And so mission accomplished, Shelly's looking great. Uh, we're still upgrading and updating a few things there, but we're also building the other parts of Cardano in parallel. So now we're turning on all the Gogan components. So those are smart contracts. So we can bring dApps and DeFi and these things to the network. And we've also been turning on all the governance components as well, Voltaire, which is just like having a VC in the, uh, the sky and a National Science Foundation in the sky to give grants for people to get where they need to go. So we just launched our first fund, uh, Fund 2, that's completely public and going to be publicly voted. And it's going to give away $250,000 uh, to different projects. And we have over 4,000 people participating there. And the fund size will just keep growing. So it's going to go from 250000 to 500000 to a million. And eventually, uh, it'll get to a nice resting pace of maybe 5 to $10 million every six to eight weeks that'll be injected into the community for dApps, DeFi, grants, research, uh, maintenance, and so forth. So okay, we're so firing on all cylinders. We're number one in GitHub commits. Uh, we have one of the largest dev teams around, over 100 people, I think a dozen companies at this point working. And we have a lot of great announcements this month, next month, and you know a lot of cool things are coming. Around February, we should have multi-asset coming in and smart contracts, as I mentioned, are on their way. And we have a great commercial pipeline as well. My company has over 110, I think, commercial deals that we're negotiating right now across the spectrum. Some are Cardano related, some are not but we always try to push people towards Cardano and we're making some great progress in Africa as well. We were going to make a big Ethiopia announcement in November, but they had the civil war thing going on. And I, I guess that takes priority and precedent but, well, for the moment. Slow down, slow down. Cause you're telling yeah. me too much and I'm trying to absorb all of this. Um, you've got also, you, you have got a very vibrant community. They've gone crazy. They've gone on the comments saying I was part of the first stake pool, uh, at Cardano going up, Cardano going to the moon. Everyone listen closely. Take me back a second and let's look at the fundamentals of any protocol. So the fundamentals of any protocol come down to two or three things. The first thing is to have good technology. And in this case, that means fast decentralized technology. Right. And the second part of it is building a vibrant community. Now, when we talk about building a vibrant community, that doesn't mean a community on Telegram, on Twitter. It means a community of developers, a community of venture capital investors plowing money into the project. Now, if right. we look at Ethereum, if we are critical of Ethereum, we could say that Ethereum's technology isn't very good. It's great technology, but it's not very scalable technology. And they now have to change the engines mid-air. Mm -hmm. But they've got a very smart, vibrant, big community. There's lots of money. The VC money is on Ethereum. Therefore, the DeFi community is starting to develop on Ethereum. Now, with those parallels in mind, let's talk about how Cardano compares to Ethereum. So let's talk about the technology first. Let's mm -hmm. look at the technology. When I compare Cardano's technology to Ethereum's technology, give me the comparison. Well, we do everything they aspire to do, and we do it soon or now, and they do it over the next three years, uh, they claim. You know, we started from a first principles basis, so we didn't just make stuff up. We went to the academy. We recruited 25 PhDs. We have four universities, uh, core university labs that are working with us in a constellation of other universities across the world, from Edinburgh to people at University of Illinois, people at University of Wyoming, et cetera, et cetera. And we wrote now 91 papers. And these papers, a lot of them have gone through the peer review process. And we've gotten third part, uh, party academic verification that the things we think are true are, th are true. And not from people in the cryptocurrency space, but people in the academic community, the cryptography space, you know, real academics, the RSA people and so forth. Okay, so that was the first and step. And they saying, are they saying that Cardano can decentralize itself and keep high TPS or high throughput? We already have that. We have 1,200 plus stake pools that are registered. 
Uh, stake pools are right now making blocks every day. As the price of ADA goes up, we get more decentralized over time uh, and we don't lose performance. In fact, it's the opposite, we gain it. So that, that core design feature that we scientifically validated, which is as your price goes up, you get more decentralized and you preserve or increase your throughput of your system. That was the holy grail. And we spent five years in deep R&D for the number one most cited academic project and then we actually went built simulations, then we built a test net, then we actually deployed it onto the main net. And we have hundreds of thousands of users and our transaction volumes up by 600% this year. And we keep seeing growth and the technology has tons of growth potential. Right now at the base layer, we can be at 150 TPS, just optimizations there should take us to a thousand TPS. Then when we add on state channels, which were built, hybrid channels were built hand in glove to work with Ouroboros, we can go to a million TPS if we want to, or beyond, because every stake pool operator can run a channel. Uh, so the and is that a function? Is that a function of the genius behind the Shelly upgrade or the Shelly hard fork? Yeah, yeah. Is, is that the split, the the fork that caused this scalability? But remember, Shelly didn't start this year. We'd been working on it since 2016. You know, we we had we had year after year writing paper after paper, formal specifications, simulations, code, prototypes, these types of things. We turned it on this year, uh, but it's really, really hard to actually build this technology in practice. And there are only a few protocols out there that were built with this level of foresight, like the Algorands and uh, and others like that. And they all have the same legacy. They started in the academy. They had the benefit of hindsight. They could take a look at 30 years of systems engineering. They could look at what worked and what didn't work in the cryptocurrency space. And then they could systematically build out the scientific corpus. We did this holistically. So we didn't just build a consensus algorithm and say, okay, we're done. We said, we need to build a network stack. We need to also build a smart contract programming language. We need to figure out interoperability. We need to figure out governance. We need to figure out how we're gonna do side chains. And there's a humongous agenda. It's why we have 100 plus people working full time just in our own company and a dozen partners uh, across the world that are working on it. And they've been doing this for five years. And 2020 was really the first year where these things started turning on. And 2021 is where they all turn on. And then we have all these things. We, we have a governance stack where people can vote on forks. We have a funding mechanism that will inject uh, you know, 50 to 100 million plus dollars, depending on price of ADA, to the ecosystem every single year. We have incredibly high throughput. We have predictable costs for smart contracts. There's gonna be tons of things. Some things we're announcing in a few days about Ethereum and so forth. And we have the ERC20 converter, which allows you to take your ERC20 token, convert it over to run on Cardano. Well, I want to talk about, about I want to talk about that because I think that's yeah. fundamental. But just for some of our viewers who are asking the question on the YouTube chat, they're asking fundamentally, what did Shelly do? What does Shelly mean? Did, yeah. Why why was Shelly such a big milestone? So we went from a static and federated system where a small group of actors like XRP, that type of a model, basically go to a decentralized and dynamic system like an Ethereum or a Bitcoin where you have a lot of participants who are involved in consensus. So you can really look at consensus in terms of three things. You can say, okay, who's making the blocks? Are the blocks being broadcast uh, in a decentralized way? And then finally, uh, the meta, which is, okay, how many people are involved in the maintenance, the upgrading and future of the system, the use and utility of the system? So it, there's a holistic notion of decentralization there. And the point of Shelley was to put all the infrastructure in place for the first two and the Voltaire upgrade is all the infrastructure for the third component. So every single five days, more and more of the blocks are made by the stick pool operators and there's a huge set of them. And then the network infrastructure, uh, we're turning on all the peer to peer infrastructure. So block production and block broadcasting will be completely decentralized at a scale hundred X over what Bitcoin has by March. Then in terms of governance, we introduced two really amazing concepts. One is something called the hard fork combinator. What this means is that it's really easy for us to do a hard fork in our system. Usually these are huge events and they're very stressful and you have to build all this consensus. All of the rules of the old Byron era, that was from September of 2017 up till July, run in parallel with the rules in the Shelley era, which started in July of this year. When we go to the Gogan era, those rules will run in parallel with the Shelley and the Byron, and it's almost like appending these things. 
So it's very easy to just glue and upgrade your network. And so then you need a consensus system to vote on what to do for a hard fork. So we created the improvement proposal process this year with the Cardano Foundation, and we'll have a full voting system for software updates. And we've been designing that update system with the European Union. We were actually a grant recipient for a project called Horizons 2020 with IBM Research and Guard Time. And the whole point of that program was to centralize software updates. So you don't have to have a you know, a single company or a single set of key holders, you have a natural way of updating, upgrading. So for years, we've been thinking about it, that will combine with the hard fork combinator and then you have decentralized upgrades in the system. So you can remove any actor in your system, IOHK, you can remove the foundation, Emergo, and the system still functions as if they weren't, uh, weren't even, uh, if, as if they were still there. And uh, no one person can control the destiny of the system. And as I and said, that's, and that's where the governance and the decentralization. Exactly. Charles, the lines are going absolutely major. So I'm going to just remind when are smart contracts coming? Yeah, so we've been gradually turning those on. So we're going to have a, a big show, a dedicated announcement December 3rd. Uh, so just in two days, uh, we do a monthly update every month. And uh, we, we push this one back by a week because of Thanksgiving. Uh, and we're going to, it's all about smart contracts. So I, I'm not going to say anything there, but uh, we have parallel threads and we have different smart contract models from Turing complete to Turing incomplete. Some that live in the Ethereum world, some that are in our world like Plutus and extended UTXO. So if you're really interested in that, two days from now, attend that. Uh, I don't want to front run any of our announcements that we're making there, but all I can say is soon. Well, I think I agree with you. I think that the feat of any protocol, and especially one like Ethereum or Cardano, is that it can continue to operate without the company and without the founder. But I'm intrigued to understand how much money IOHK has to keep pushing the mission of Cardano. How well funded is, is this company? I'm a very rich man, Matt Red, and uh, this is a mission for me. So I can I can do this for a long, long time if I want to. And I'm only 33, so I'm going to be doing this probably in my 50s or 60s. Well, what a brilliant note to part with. Charles, it's been an absolute pleasure.